Near the heart of genetics, we have proteins. Proteins are synthesized at the ribosomes in both prokaryotes and eukaryotes through the process of translation. This is accomplished through decoding the mRNA strand transcribed from a gene made of DNA. DNA stores digital information in quaternary code, A's, T's, C's, and G's. And nearly all organisms utilize what we call the universal genetic code to assemble proteins. In mRNA, the codon GGA encodes for the amino acid glycine, GAG for glutamic acid, and AGG for arginine. Because there are 64 codons for the 20 basic amino acids, we call this universal code degenerate. Codon degeneracy basically means that it is redundant. Not only does GGA encode for glycine, but so do GGC, GGG, and GGU. During the process of translation, condensation reactions occur between the amine and carboxyl groups of adjacent amino acids. The types of bonds formed are a special type of covalent bond called a peptide bond. When two amino acids are linked by a single peptide bond, the molecule is referred to as a dipeptide. Three or more amino acids form polypeptides. The amino acid sequence of a polypeptide is also known as its primary structure. Now the only part of amino acids that is variable is the R group. The R group gives each amino acid its unique chemical properties, whether they are nonpolar, polar, or polar ionic. The sequence of amino acids with their unique properties can result in the interaction between non-adjacent amino acids. The interactions produce repetitive structures called alpha helices and beta pleated sheets. Polar or hydrophilic amino acids can form hydrogen bonds. They are found on the surfaces of water-soluble proteins. Nonpolar or hydrophobic amino acids are found on the interior of membranes and water-soluble proteins. Each type of repetitive structure form the secondary structure of proteins. The sum of all secondary structures that produce a three-dimensional structure is the tertiary structure, usually classified as either globular or fibrous. may also be quaternary structure only when there are two or more polypeptides that compose a functional protein. It is because of the diversity of amino acids and proteins that exist that early geneticists predicted that this was the hereditary material. In a five long amino acid chain, there are potentially 20 to the fifth power or 3,200,000 possible combinations. And then through the experimentation from Hershey and Chase, we now know that DNA is the hereditary material that stores and transmits information. A couple of hypotheses suggest why we have this pattern across the three domains, archaea, eubacteria, and eukarya, that there are these 20 common amino acids. For one, the Miller-Urey experiment suggests that there were only 20 amino acids formed during the origin of life. Another is that natural selection favored the use of only 20 amino acids. Furthermore, it suggests that all life today shares a universal common ancestor. We can agree that there are 20 basic amino acids, however there are more than just these 20. There are several discrepancies with our genetic code. For one, a stop codon sometimes also signals for an amino acid. Second, some amino acids are used only by specific clades. And lastly, some amino acids undergo conversion in order to produce a stable protein. First, let's discuss one known as selenocysteine. One pattern we have with our genetic code is that each three-letter codon signals one amino acid. Three of these codons terminate translation, UGA, UAG, and UAA. Sometimes UGA could signal for selenocysteine if there is element 34, selenium, available. This amino acid is used to assemble selenoproteins across all domains but not all lineages. In humans, selenium is a vital nutrient in peroxidases and in catabolizing metabolites from thyroid hormones. Discovered in 2002, pyrolysine is one synthesized and used only by members of archaea and eubacteria. Like selenocysteine, it is encoded by a stop codon, UAG, in methanogenic species of these two domains. Another discrepancy is that some of these 20 basic amino acids must undergo a conversion in order for a protein to be properly functional. For example, we require small amounts of vitamin C. This vitamin converts an amino acid in collagen, 
from proline to hydroxyproline. Under normal conditions, collagen has an immense range of functions. It is a component of cartilage, walls of blood vessels, tendons, skin, and bone. Depending on its abundance in a tissue, it can be compliant or flexible in its ability to hold tissues together. When we are deficient in vitamin C, conversion of the amino acid proline does not occur, resulting in a protein that is not stable. As a result, scurvy develops. Symptoms of this reversible disease are bleeding of the gums, joint pain, lethargy, skin roughness, and bruising. Treatment involves taking supplements of vitamin C. Aside from plant sources, many animals produce their own vitamin C, including monotremes, marsupials, insectivores, carnivores, and rodents, while others need to consume it because they do not synthesize it on their own, like in many bats, primates, including humans, some rodents, including guinea pigs. Another conversion produces the most abundant neurotransmitter in the human nervous system. When glutamic acid loses a single proton from one of its carboxyl groups, it becomes the negatively charged glutamate. This neurotransmitter plays a principal role in learning, memory, and increasing signal response in the hippocampus and neocortex.